Hello and welcome back. This is the third installment in my tutorial series. And today we will look at uh, first the interface. Uh, then we'll look a little bit at the map. And finally, we will uh, have a look at the unit, uh, including the purchase and upgrade screen. But first, we will take a very short trip into the options uh, menu, which you can access here. And you can also see the hotkey. You can either press, you can always see the hotkey or hotkeys. This one has two hotkeys, for example. So if I press S, I come here. So we will go to options and we go to display. And I will have my hex grid to 60. I think that's a nice compromise. And I don't want the dead soldiers or the wrecks because that's just annoying in my personal experience. So here we are. And yes, this can be called demo colon north. So we can just save the game like this. It's very responsive, very quick. Um, yes, and before we do anything, let's take just one short moment to look at the nice units. So you can clearly see these are Panzer II, twos, and you can see the Panzer 1B here. It even has the correct number of road wheels. And you have the Stuka and the Messerschmitt, uh, and you have the 7.5 centimeter gun and the 10.5 centimeter and the engineers they have uh, flamethrowers and the normal infantry have rifles and a little machine pistol did i see a little bit of flicker there could be in a zoom distance and you can see running water and fields and this little village here towns so the roads normally i'm pretty much zoomed out like this. So, let's look. This is the menu. Here you purchase and upgrade units, or purchase units in this case, but the upgrade screen is very similar. This is where you toggle the chat. Um, the chat lists, uh, first of all, the mission briefing, so you can access it during the scenario. Uh, this is also, I guess, where you can send messages during multiplayer, if you're into that sort of thing. And you can also Enter your cheat codes uh, here. That's not the correct way to do it, but uh, um, if you wonder where the cheat codes go, they go into the chat listing here. Uh, this one toggles the unit listing, and this is these are the deployed units. So if you take the time to pick up, right-click one of the units, then we get another button when the, with the undeployed buttons. And you see, when you click it, you get to see your deployment access, and I can place it with the left click here. And you have the mission overview here, uh, name of scenario, date, and scenario objectives. And you can also have secondary objectives here in some cases. And you have the unit stat panel here, and it works like this. You can see this. So if I click a unit, either on the map or in the menu, I get to see its stats very quickly there. And I can click a unit here and in the menu, and I can quickly compare it to an enemy unit. So you can see all the key stats of the unit displayed here. So very, very quick and easy way to to compare combat stats. And you can have it open like this. This I think is uh, many prefer to play like this. Or this. Uh, this is your prestige, starting prestige, and your prestige return. So every turn, you get 100 extra prestige. Uh, this includes turns that are left when you finish the game. So if you finish on turn 10, you also get your prestige for the last five turns automatically. And you also get uh, a bonus. Uh, currently, that's uh, 136% with 16 turns left, 15 plus this deployment turn and this quickly decreases so the slower you go the less bonus you get this one lists your total core slots and the used core slots uh, the reason i start with some free slots is because i have taken the panzer and infantry general traits which you can see listed here by hovering over the faction you see the allies have no traits uh, the axis has a lot of traits both positive and negative. So uh, 
this is the current weather and ground state and the forecast and in this case the forecast accuracy is 100 percent and we are currently in turn zero the deployment phase of uh, turn zero so sort of before the uh, the game starts before the scenario starts you also have some buttons here this is the undo button i have configured it so i can undo everything and like i showed in previous tutorial the first one you can configure this undo button and you have the strategic map you can zoom in and out here uh, gray is german these are the poles and you can see the flags and the roads and the terrain so it uh, gives a very good overview and once i hit turn one you can also see which units have movement and attack left yes and this one toggles air mode uh, and you can see that the world sort of fades and you can see your tanks not air, aircraft much more clearly um this is uh because uh Okay, the hotkey wasn't working properly. Not sure what that was about. Okay, I can look at that later, but uh, that is air mode for you. Um, and you have the previous and next unit here. I guess you can, you, we'll use those a lot. And here you can sleep a unit for one turn or more turns. You have a sort of mini map here, it's similar to the strategic map, only more compact and you can destroy it out okay and then you have the i'm not sure what i should call it the quick view uh, if you click a unit then you get to see the unit and what terrain it's in in one quick view and here you can see the unit the number of experience star uh, which faction it belongs to the special skills of the unit unit class and the transportation current and maximum strength suppression current and maximum fuel current yeah, and ammo and entrenchment current and maximum and you can also see the stats for that terrain here we have some unit specific buttons you have replace that takes away some experience but it, it's cheaper than elite replace uh, upgrade that takes you to the, the version of the purchase screen where you can upgrade uh, the unit uh, this one if you have a truck you can uh, mount and drive off uh, or it can also do that automatically we'll look at it later this is strategic transports normally they are listed at the top here the number of trains transport planes or transport ships you have available and for example if you are standing with an infantry on an airfield then you can click this one and enter your plane and then fly off to another air airport or if you're a paratrooper you can jump out anyway and this one is just undeployed but you might as well right click remember okay so you also have uh, this split button here is a new functionality where you can split the unit down the half get half strength in this case eight and seven and they can act independently and they can reform later and this just disbands or kills the unit let's talk i think that was the entire uh, user face you know no sorry yes you have the unit details here uh a summary of a more detailed summary of statistics we'll dive into that later but you can also both see and assign heroes here i took the starting free starting hero killer team normally you start with zero heroes and get one per scenario i have a this one is extremely good this can be extremely good on in making one of your big artillery pieces or even a strategic bombers absolutely murder ground units and this ain't so bad there is lots of flags and they're they are all often heavily defended so actually getting plus five attack when attacking flags ain't so bad it's not the best hero but this one is in the best hero department and this is almost at that level and this ain't bad either so it's a very good spread 
rewards. Uh, depending on unit type, you can get uh, medals, and the medals have different levels. So this one gets uh, heroic defense uh, medal if it survives five separate attacks in a single turn. That's possible. Maybe it was uh, shelled three times by uh, artillery and then attacked twice by ground units uh, and somehow managed to survive that. And then he gets the level one uh, medal. So if he survives six attacks in a single turn, then he gets uh, one more level. And if he survives seven attacks, he gets, if you get what I mean, it's the same with these others. And it depends on your unit type. Tanks have different medals or mostly the same, but slightly different. So here you can see sort of a history. And here you can give your units uh, custom camouflage. Uh, it has no effect other than looking cool. Plus it can make it much easier to tell your tanks or other units apart, especially if you have hero or, or medals on them. And you can also even switch out the insignia, but why would I kind of make my German tank have British aircraft roundels? That makes very little sense so anyway that's it a uh, quick look at terrain you can just click an open square to see see what kind of uh, terrain it is you can also click one with um, a unit in then it opens further to the right here and then you can just hover over here to see what is called initiative cap and if the initiative cap is zero there is no limitation on initiative uh, but all other forms of non-open terrain have a cap so this one forest has a cap of two so everything above two is just wasted so it evens out uh, the initiative gap and some stuff have uh, high initiative tanks have higher initiative than infantry for example but that doesn't help in forest there is also maximum and base entrenchment base entrenchment you get immediately when moving into the hex and it can never be taken away maximum entrenchment and requires you to stay put for a while and how quickly we entrench is based on unit type infantry and also anti-tank guns towed one towed ones uh, they entrench fast and also entrenchment speed is dependent on the terrain so this forest has a quick entrenchment if but if you look here Max entrenchment is 5 and entrenchment speed is very slow. So a tank standing in an open hex, uh, it won't uh, really uh, entrench much. But uh, infantry standing in the forest would quickly get up to the maximum level. And you can also, some heroes help with entrenchment and also engineers, these guys. They have a, um, entrenchment support, yes. So all adjacent units uh, entrenched twice as fast. So, a little bonus there. Um, you can see from the forest, it has the close terrain trait. The same goes for cities and villages and towns and hills and mountains. Uh, close terrain, this is where you want infantry standing or attacking into because it uses something called close defense. It's a stat that all units have. And when it comes to close defense, uh, tanks uh, aren't any good. So infantry will slaughter tanks in close terrain like cities or forests or hills. And that's important to, to remember. Tanks are kings in the open. Infantry is needed for close terrain. Uh, you can also see the movement costs here. You can see that uh, open terrain like this is one movement point for most things, but wheel cost two. So wheel units uh, work best when moving along these roads, because you can also see there is a minor road there. It won't help much if you move diagonally like this, but if you move along the road, then you can go very far. And you can move the maximum distance. You can see out the forest, it has a completely different movement table. Yes? And some terrain is actually impossible to certain unit types. Something called deep forest is only available to light infantry. 
And the same applies to high mountains, those that are snow capped. We'll meet those later. This is a maiden river, it can't be crossed at all. A minor river can be crossed by a unit standing next to it and then expanding all movement points so that it must remain on the hex then for one turn and it gets a big penalty when attacked so it's very dangerous to just move unsupported onto a river to cross it in the face of enemy resistance. The same can be applied to stuff like swamps, they have this, uh, sorry, this uh, vulnerable position Trait. Yes, so you don't want to be caught hanging around in swamps. This is a swamp and a minor river, but there are some hexes that are just swamps and they are no good standing in. Uh, yes, is there anything else I need to tell you about uh, the map? Yes, uh, you can see airports here. Planes base out of airports and their range is limited, so they can only reach about my friends start here, so they can only reach about this far, depending on type. So, as you advance forward, you need to capture airfields and rebase your planes. We'll look at that later. So, I think that covered the basic interface and uh, the map. And now let's look at units. Okay, let's um, select this. Uh, Let's select this tank that has this nice uh, paint scheme. We'll push the unit details button. And here we can see strength, suppression, fuel, all the basic stats. And also that he has a base accuracy of 50. The way the game works, you get one shot per point of strength you have left. So this tank it gets 10 shots and it compares its attack rating either soft if it's attacking infantry or other soft targets or hard if it's attacking tanks or other hard targets and it compares its attack ratings against the defender's ground defense so if this tank was attacking a tank of the same type it would use its 10 versus its 11 defense so and it would have a 50% chance of hitting and then it would compare those uh, ratings so and the bigger the difference is the bigger the chance or smaller the chance of scoring damage is that's the simple version and your accuracy will go up uh, once your uh, tank gets more experienced stars you get plus eight accuracy per star so this can go all the way up to 90. in addition you can get extra accuracy from some uh, hero traits and you can also get accuracy bonus for having recon adjacent or flying over the target so the higher accuracy the more effective your strength is basically so this is the tank class it costs 170 prestige to buy it takes up two of my slots it has a movement type of tracked you can just uh, it has two spotting so it can look two hexes away it has range zero so it has to move into uh, the adjacent hex to attack so all attacks with at range zero use the defender's terrain this is important it doesn't matter what terrain you're standing in if you're attacking into a forest initiative figure the difference between you and the defender or vice versa the more likely you are to get your shots in before he has the chance to return fire and if your tank can kill half the enemy strength before the enemy can even shoot back then the odds that you won't be taking much damage is very good so soft attack soft targets hard targets and this is air attack you have no air attack this is aircraft have air attack and anti-aircraft guns have air attack but other units don't and ships also have air attack Naval attack, and uh, this is very minimal. Maybe you could shoot at the patrol boat that's uh, lying next to the shore or something, it, but it won't be effective at all. Your ground defense, a defense against air aircraft, and this I talked about the closed terrain. Here you have zero closed defense, and you can compare your 11 ground defense to zero closed defense. And you can start imagining that you are much more likely to take damage 
when in close terrain so don't stand in close terrain and don't attack into close terrain with your tanks if you do you deserve to die um and of course this initiative six won't help you since the close terrain has initiative cap of one or maybe two so don't target type you are a hard target so attackers use uh, hard attack when they attack you and that these are your two traits one is rapid fire so instead of getting one shot per point of strength you get one and a half shot so this unit gets 15 tries it shoots 15 times and all tanks have this overrun this one is only for light tanks with only machine guns and uh, 20 millimeter cannon uh, overrun is for all tanks it means that if the defending unit is very weak if you can kill it without it doing any return damage to you and if the defenders also is not supported by say an anti-tank gun then and it is standing in the open then you can overrun it and if you overrun it you do not move eat up your attack action and you don't eat up your movement action so you can continue moving and continue attacking but movement points are used so you can't actually move further than your total movement allowance but you can shoot a number of you can kill a number of units equal to your ammunition in just one turn so this tank could in theory kill up to five units in one turn that doesn't happen very often but uh, sometimes uh, you kill two or three or even more units with a single good tank so that's very quickly the stats and you can see that the recon car it has the similar layout and it has more fuel less ammo uh, the prestige cost is different it has half track no <laughs> no this is wheel movement and it has tree spotting and slightly weaker ratings on attack but it's also pretty much similar to this uh, tank here and it has the recon i talked about it gives a recon bonus to adjacent to units that are adjacent to to enemies you're standing next to and this bonus can go all the way up to 25 if you have a five star recon car that's huge and it has rapid fire and it also has a very interesting stat called face movement but we can look at that later when we dive into the unit menu so let's close this one up and remember what i said you can click a unit and if you have this side panel open you can quickly compare them so you can compare the standard german infantry to the standard polish infantry and quickly see that they are almost identical uh, only that the germans have eight instead of six uh, ground defense so they are better so they cost 20 points more but oddly enough the germans only cost one slot why two slots sorry and the poles cost three that is because i have the infantry general uh generals infantry general trait so um, it uses 25 percent less slots so it's rounded down to two um yeah i think that's enough and now we can quickly look at the purchase uh, menu it's up here this is where you have some filtering buttons uh, you can have scenarios or campaigns where you can buy units from multiple nationalities then there will be more flags there or you could do all but now we can just play the germans so it doesn't matter this button shows all your units and that's no problem in 1939 but when you get to 1943 or four or five you have a lot of different units in each category and besides i just like looking at them by category so we will quickly go through the categories and then we'll look at some of the key units in each category and of course we are, can only cover those units that are available september 1st so we can have a look at later arrivals when i'm playing those other scenarios sounds okay this is infantry the kings of close terrain remember these are the tanks they are the kings of open ground these are beacon cars they are your very best friends because they have good spotting and they have this face movement thing 
Anti-tank guns are also good friends because, well, not this guy. The door knocker isn't much to write home about, but uh, later anti-tank guns can be extremely useful in combating superior allied tanks. Anti-aircraft guns are your best friend when the enemy tries to bomb you. They are, like anti-tank guns, way more effective than they ever were in Panzer Corps 1. This is artillery, and artillery was always effective in Panzer Corps, and now it mainly does suppression damage. It doesn't inflict as many kills as it used to, and that is an extremely good thing, because uh, then you can't just artillery spam your way to, to victory. That said, uh, causing that suppression is part of the solution, especially for digging out and trenched infantry in close terrain. Uh, and I also have to add that towed artillery pieces are incredibly useful in Panzer Corps 2. They were not in Panzer Corps 1, and we will come back to why that is. But uh, I mean, the Sturm Panzer 1, you can remember that from Panzer Corps 1, I guess many of you ran that one a lot for several years in uh, until you got the late war some propelled artillery pieces, but now I find myself using these guys a lot. Fighters, tactical bombers, and this guy, which is not really a bomber, but a spotter. See, it has a huge spotting range of four. And that is pretty amazing. And strategic bombers. And like I said, all. And let's start with infantry. Uh, Wehr infantry. That's the basic German infantry. And uh, it has decent stats. You can look at them here. It's good at killing soft targets. Because if you compare soft attack to its own ground defense, you can see that it has a good chance of doing damage to itself. And the Poles only had six. Not so good versus tanks. And tanks also have higher ground defense, even the weak Panzer 1s and 2s have higher ground defense than this attack rating, so... Infantry in the open will do some damage against uh, tanks, but uh, if tanks attack them in close terrain, then they will do a lot of damage, because... 7 hard attack is a lot when compared to zero, 0 close defense, so... I cannot stress that enough. Uh, they also have two special abilities, Forced March, they can go from speed 3 to 4 every 3 rounds, that can be super useful. Not only because it gives them 4 axes of movement in open terrain, but also because it sometimes can let them push forward into a hex extra of close terrain. And this one just tells us that they are capable of attacking the close defense rating of a target. Tanks don't have that, so tanks attack another tank's ground defense even while fighting in close terrain. So there isn't much advantage for them there. Um, you can give them a truck. You get like, later you get half tracks. Um, that's of course super. Uh, the truck you can see it has speed movement eight. That's just four hexes in open terrain because of the movement cost, uh, which isn't much more than the uh, troops can do on their own. Uh, but of course, moving along a road, it can go eight hexes. Uh, so it is super for quick redeployment. But the drawback, of course, is that this unit is just 140 prestige, and this one costs almost as much as another infantry unit. So for 245 I can have almost two infantry so if you're short on prestige then maybe you want to take something else and this prestige cost is also factored into replacement so basically they are blowing up your trucks as they kill your people so giving this replacement it's much more expensive when it has a truck as compared to just this so I would recommend running one or two of these guys without trucks early on, because the maps are also fairly small. But uh, sooner or later, and then you can just 
skip straight to giving them uh, half tracks which are more mobile in uh, many types of terrain but I'll, you can experiment a bit with that this also explains why cavalry is so much more expensive because remember this is 245 the cavalry is 290 suddenly they have their own trans built in transportation so suddenly they don't feel so quite so expensive agreed um yes and you can see the cavalry has very similar stats to the to the normal infantry but you can see they have higher cost of course and they have one less ammo not much of a problem but they have superior speed they can go speed five and they can even force march you can see the symbol up there and they can do close defense attacks uh, and they have better spotting so altogether a very good unit uh, the only thing they are not good at is defending against air attacks so you can see the infantry has nine the cavalry has four so they are they take a lot of damage if they are caught in the open even normal fighter interceptors will do a lot of damage and you don't want them strafed by stukas or pf 110s I don't use them much, but that mostly just for flavor reasons. I don't. I want tanks and infantry. I don't want horses running around. But uh, it's actually a really, very good unit. If you compare the, this infantry to the grenadier, uh, we can uh, do this. We can see first of all that the grenadier has two speed and it has no force march. So pretty much needs to have the upper, and this is than 275 points so they will be also very expensive when they take damage and well that's the way it is uh, but if we look at the other stats they have better hard attack and they have altogether better ground and air defense and better initiative so in a stand-up fight the, the grenadier does much better than the standard infantry and when we're talking about grenadiers, you can compare them to pioneers or engineers, combat engineers, basically. You can see the combat engineers, they uh, cost one more slot and they have weaker attack ratings, especially soft attack. And they have not so good ground defense and their initiative is worse and so forth. They are, in fact, comparable to normal infantry in many ways but if we look at their close defense we suddenly see that they have eight close defense everything else at this stage has zero so that tells us that these guys they are at their best in close terrain because also remember in close terrain uh, infantry attacks other infantry with soft attack but the defender uses their close defense so this guy is actually better protected in close terrain than standing in the open uh, the pioneer also brings a lot of other abilities to the table this is important to clear out the infantry you need to ignore entrenchment because some entrenchment levers can't be removed because they are built into the terrain so towns never go below four but uh, engineer just completely disregards uh, uh, this um, and he also extends some of that bonus to an adjacent friendly unit yes close combat we know that one now mine sweeper he can just clear out the mine unit and he gets a bonus against bunkers and he lets other adjacent units entrench much faster that's not so huge uh, you are usually moving around quite a bit, so... Uh, but it's a bonus, you should be aware of it. Uh, the Brick and Pioneer is not much of a fighter, it has a special skill that lets it act as a little bridge when it's standing on the river. So, that can be extremely useful, and you can see it's only one slot, that's because it has no fighting potential, really. So, the next thing I want to talk about before we skip forward to these other categories is overstrength overstrength is this button uh, you have seen it uh, 
probably your eyes have been focused on it for quite a bit now. And uh, there is no link between overstrength and experience in this game like it used to be back in the day. So every unit can potentially be given max overstrength. And it costs more slots. Uh, five extra strength costs as many slots as the base cost of the unit. Uh, so you can see that this infantry that costs two slots, I can bring it up to 20 instead of 15 for four slots. And normally this would be way higher because without the Panzer general trait, then the base cost of the infantry unit is three and three doubled is six at the highest level. So I can actually save quite a few uh, points if I'm using our strength a lot, so uh, which I will be using in most of my game. Uh, the cost of any transportation is also added in, above the prestige cost. So if we go here, you can see suddenly the overstrength cost, the slot cost is the same because the Opel has zero slots but it became a lot cheaper, just 186 there, instead of 326. So there is also the problem of having transportation on your infantry. It gets expensive very quickly. And let me underline it by just clicking over to the tank. And if I tank, take a Panzer 2C and overstrength it, it's just 255. But this very infantry with the Opel, it's 326, but without the Opel, it's just 186. So, especially if you're playing on higher difficulties or for the first few scenarios where you haven't had time to accumulate much prestige, this can be important considerations. So, I think that's uh, about enough for our strength. You can always take it back down and or do the middle ground. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. We can talk about the basket button while we're at it. Um, this lets you shop around. I could take one 18 strength and I could take one more. And then you can see everything gets grayed out because either I don't have enough uh, prestige or I run out of slots. So that was too much. I can remove one and then I take one regular instead. And this is allowed so I can purchase, but all the units get grayed out because I can no longer afford any of them. I can afford nothing. So you can plus, minus or remove. Very handy for if you have like 1500 prestige and seven slots free, you can play around with your with what you want to buy. I find it very handy. Um, that was infantry. In many ways, tanks simpler. We start with the yes. If you look here, everything is just two slots. Normally, these are guys are two slots, and these these guys are better, so they are three slots. But again, I have the Panzer General trait. Remember, you can just look at it there. So all my tanks are the same cost at start. So this can go. So that's good for me. Um, All tanks have this overrun trait. I already explained how it works. Not going to go into that. And some of the lighter tanks have rapid fire. I also explained that one. This is the Panzer one. You can see there is quite a bit of difference here because these guys only have machine guns. This one has a 20 millimeter. It's not much of a cannon, but uh, it's something. And armor is slightly higher, uh, but it was, uh, it was not very well armored. And this is a ch captured Czech tank, or captured, they took over Czechoslovakia and then they took over the tanks of the Czech army and uh, the tank production. And this, especially this tank chassis was used for a variety of, we go all the way through to 1945 in fact, but not just 
this tank it was used in Poland, France, and early stages of the Russian campaign in Barbarossa. But uh, later we have the Hetzler anti tank gun in 1945. Um, but these are actually the only real tanks the German has at this stage because the developers have excluded the Panzer III and the Panzer IV. Actually, there were more Panzer III and Panzer IVs than there were 35Ts and 38Ts, but uh, well, from a game design perspective, I think yeah, it is cool to include these Czech tanks at this point. So the, this Czech tank, it looks to be better, but it has no rapid fire, see? So this gets 50% more shots per strength point than this, and is that really worth it? Uh, maybe not. But this could be starting to be worth it because it has higher initiative, it has better defense, it has better hard attack. So if you think you will be fighting Polish armor, then having one of these guys might make sense. But otherwise, I would recommend the 2C. It's an excellent uh, tank for killing infantry in the open. Really good. Recon, you have two types. I would, of course, recommend getting the one with the better defense. There is not much difference between them. They have the same three abilities. Recon, which gives the accuracy bonus, rapid fire, and face movement. That means you can move many times up to the limit of your movement points instead of making one single move per turn, like normal units. So you could go forward a bit, look around, go forward, look around, go forward, look around. Ah, oh, there is the enemy, and then you can quickly retreat, or you can move over to one unit, give the recon bonus, wait until the attack is over, and move over to another enemy unit, give the recon bonus. Very handy. Anti-tank guns. They have this ability that they didn't in Panzer Corps 1, and that makes all the difference. They will fire in support like artillery does uh, they have only range zero when attacking but when defending they act like artillery so they will defend any adjacent unit except another anti-tank unit because uh, it would be just super cheesy if you could interlock uh, an endless number of uh, anti-tank guns like uh, like that. This is the German door knocker it's just a very small gun not very effective but in this game it can it has a hard attack value of 14 it's the same as this the best tank at this stage and of course if the enemy if the polish attack you with a recon car or tank they first get hit in the face by 14 strength and then whatever the unit has if it was an infantry or one of your tank it gets to defend normally so this is a powerful enabler and you can see it starts out really, really cheap, just one slot. So it's definitely worth uh, considering. And while on the topic, stuff that starts at strength one, they can be over strengthened to 12 without using more slots or all the way up to 15 at two slots. That applies to this guy. The recon plane, not so relevant. And also the Dornier strategic bomber. And things that are just two slots can always strengthen to 11 for free, no extra slot cost, or 13 for just three. So, so there's no reason why you wouldn't spend these those 14 prestige here. Um, yes, you can put up on the wagon or the truck, but I think you can see from the price this is the better option because it moves so much better, six points of half-track movement. Uh, it's almost not worth bothering with these two guys. Same with anti-aircraft artillery. You have the little guns, the 20 millimeter, and also the 37 millimeter or 3.5 centimeter. Uh, these are good guns, uh, especially when defending, because they have this uh, trait here. That's called AI support, no, 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 I was looking at this one. This one has low altitude attack. That means that uh, as tactical bombers and fighters attack you, uh, you can shoot at their close defense. So it only has six 
air attack. That's not a whole lot, but when these planes, Mr. Stuka, it has zero close defense instead of seven ground defense. So of course it will be, do quite a bit of damage. It also has rapid fire, so a 10 strength of this, but we will maybe at least have strength 12, so it will shoot 18 times against the close defense of the Stuka. And it will cover, it has range 2, so it covers a radius of 2 hexes. It, this lovely little gun covers a pretty huge area, in fact. And unlike in the previous game, it has a native speed of 2, so you can actually move it around a bit in without the truck. Um, all anti-aircraft units are also switchable, so you can put them into anti-ground mode and actually attack with it. They are decent in that mode, but they cannot also defend against the air attacks. Uh, this means uh, this applies to strategic bombers, artillery, and anti-aircraft artillery. They do mostly suppression damage, not so much kill damage, unless you take the anti-air veteran trait. And they do kills. Uh, but suppression is also good because it stops bombing damage and it sets up the enemy bombers for attack by your fighters. So useful. Uh, this just says, says that it supports and this says that uh, even if they attack uh, an aircraft, uh, that aircraft don't get to shoot back at them. That's uh, logic really. Aircraft can of course bomb anti-aircraft units as something else. So you can give them a little wagon or the recommended and it's just one point but of course you have to take this into consideration. This is 360 prestige. You can get two panzers for the cost of that. So they are very costly in terms of prestige. But if the enemy air force is good for anything, it's bleeding you dry of prestige because they keep bombing your good tanks and other your artillery and other units, and so you they force you to replenish their losses even mid scenario, and you can quickly go to hundreds, if not thousands, of prestige once you get to the point where Allied bombers are in out in force. So anti-air is good. This one is basically the 20 millimeter on a little truck, so you can move it around offensively. Unfortunately, this trait only works when defending, so uh, you won't be... It, it's in the text, you can access close defense of attacking aircraft with the same trait. So when you're shooting at non-attacking aircraft after they tried to bomb you and you want to shoot them again then you won't be doing much damage because if you were shooting at this Junker you would first shoot at its uh, zero close defense as it was bombing something near you and then when you try to attack it on your turn then you would attack the seven ground defense and you wouldn't do too much damage and also since this has this trait it won't help against these guys because look they don't have the this one has this one has the tactical bombers and the fighters do but the strategic bombers they're going too high for the poor 20 millimeter so i don't think this isn't worth it that you can also see that in the cost it's two slots but it doesn't cost so much uh, prestige but i think i would rather have two over strength in the truck than one of these guys. Uh, let's uh, move on to artillery. We're almost done. Okay, so artillery. Artillery has some of the same traits as anti-aircraft. They have the suppressing fire. They also do extra damage against uh, entrenchment. Normally units do one point of entrenchment damage taking something down from 8 to 7, for example. This one kills two points, and it's the same for these two guys. They also have entrenchment killer times two. This one has times three, and there is even a hero that gives times four. Um, 
those don't stack, so only the best one applies. And also strategic bombers, they have entrenchment killer. So it's a good way to clear away entrenchment before attack by your infantry units. And of course, they also do damage to the target, but thanks to this one, they mostly do suppression. But the suppressed defender isn't shooting back. It's not dead, but it's not shooting back, and it's almost as good. Uh, this trait means that it will provide support fire, so it will protect adjacent units under attack. But unlike in Panzer Corps 1, artillery doesn't always fire. It only fires against soft targets, unless it also has this one, anti-tank support. Then it will shoot if uh, tanks and other hard targets. This is a design decision. This one only has the soft defense. This one doesn't have the soft defense. It only has anti-tank support, but it has counter battery fire in addition. So basically, when enemy artillery within its range, and this has a huge four range, tries to shoot, they will get shot automatically in the face by this guy. But if it is defending a friendly infantry and that infantry gets attacked by an enemy infantry unit, it won't shoot. So this makes me think that this 15 centimeters is by far the best gun. I mean, I could take this. They have almost the same stats against infantry, but this one is much better against tanks and will support fire against tar targets attacking you. And I could achieve about this plus this. It would be about the same. But what's the reason then? Why can't I just have one big good gun? And also, it has the advantage of only using up one hex. That means it can more easily fit into the defensive line. So my army is typically full of these guys, unless I'm in a place where I won't be attacked by tanks, then I might drop down to this one for just that scenario. And I also tend to have sort of a seal breaker for four range heavy gun. One, maybe two late in the war, I'm not sure. It depends. So what about the Sturmpanzer, the SIG? 33, it was the king of Panzer Corp 1, wasn't it? And now it's just, uh, well, it compares okay to, uh, to this one and compares okay to this one also, I guess, and it can move four forward, but yeah, it has only a two range, uh, but it has much better ground defense. I think this is good for mobile operations. If you want to blitz through a map, but uh, I think you even start with one of these in Poland. So uh, combine this with normal infantry with the three speed and force march or a cavalry, then you can move quickly forward and take some uh, enemy positions uh, if you are willing to take some damage on your uh, attacking infantry uh, or cavalry. You also support this with bombers, then it can be quite effective. But I find mostly that I prefer to use these towed pieces. And if you haven't played Panzer Corps 2 yet, that sounds insane because how do you work this offensively? And then I must show you something. I would purchase one of them and I would place it here. No, I want to pick it up. I will place my big guy here. And I will actually end my deployment. And now you can look at this. It can move just one hex, uh, but it has transportation. So it has the ability to go further. And it can't move that far because I have fear of the unknown, so I have to push back the fog of war. Uh, but if you look at this, it can go all the way over here because you see the little arrow symbol and it will travel and it will disembark automatically so it is not caught in its truck. And of course, if I do this then, this is just an example, 
then I have set up a pretty strong defensive position around that gun. And if I had some enemies here now, then I could go on the offensive the turn after. So this is why towed artillery and also towed anti-air and anti-tank are really good in Panzer Corps too. And this also applies to infantry that's riding in, uh, in trucks or half trucks. Uh, but you see, if you go very far, then you will stay in your truck and be, be at the mercy of attacking units. Yes. Okay, so now I have managed to gray out all these units because I have, haven't have so much left. And you can also see the autosave. It autosaves at the start and end of every turn. That is very handy because then I can just go back. And combined with the undo function, then you have full control. Shouldn't have to manually save anything, really. So, let's finish up. We are done with artillery. We talked about counter battery. Um, yes, of course, now I don't have too much prestige. So, I would just... Uh, maybe... Disband a few units uh, just to make some room for my fighter. It can escort other fighters. No, it's, I was <laughs> escort other airplanes. It cannot escort other fighters, but it can escort other airplanes. And by fighter in this case, I mean aircraft that have no brackets around their air attack rating because if you look here this one is a tactical bomber but it has no brackets this one has brackets so it can only fire in defense but this heavy fighter really has no brackets so it can't be escorted so basically fighters can escort all these guys except the bf 110c but on the other hand this one is a bit more capable than other bombers in taking care of itself. So, and it has the low attack, but it doesn't have very much in attack rating. So, most of the time it should be killing other planes, not shooting at ground target. I tend to use a good deal of uh, anti-aircraft artillery. Did I actually talk about... Uh, well, no, I think I skipped the good, good guns. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll finish the planes and then go back to the anti-aircraft guns. Um, so it should be escorting more or at killing other targets, uh, air targets, and then later in the scenario we can use it for some ground attacks against units in the open. Used for spotting and the recon bonus, same as the recon car. It's slow. It's very weak against other fighters. Uh, but it has very high uh, attack ratings uh, and most units have bad air defense so it will do a lot of damage against tanks i mean the first time you run into a matilda you really wish you have a good junker 87b stuka nearby so it can rain some bombs on it because your tanks will hardly be able to touch it uh, this doesn't have very high attack ratings, but it has better defense and much better speed. And it can also be quite helpful in helping clean out enemy bombers or fighters that just have a few strength points left. Uh, strategic bombers, this one is the better one, uh, but this one is very cheap. You can have a, a 12 strength for just one slot. But of course, it's a uh, Attack ratings are also very poor. They do suppressing damage, so mostly suppression, not so many kills. And they have this carpet bombing ability that kills some ammunition and fuel. And they are also entrenchment killer. So that concludes the planes. To skip back to Antir. This guy has all these um, stats that the 20 millimeter does, but it does not have rapid fire. And it does not have low altitude attack, but it has uh, twice as high air attack, so it can more reliably do damage against more 
powerful aircraft and it also has a good chance of touching strategic bombers so it's a compromise it still has two range and uh, it still is uh, one uh, slot only so uh, well, both are effective but uh, the roles are very different now this is the king of anti here you can see it has the same traits the same it can switch it has, has suppressing fire and all that uh, but it has an amazing 24 air attack that's twice again that of the 3.5 centimeter and more importantly, it has one more range. So it's a three hex radius. So it covers a huge area. So two and then three. Well, you have to start somewhere. So you would just buy one to begin with, but you try to expand so that your each of your little combat groups, combat group, they have one each that can protect them with their anti-aircraft umbrella. And then you add some of the small one for tape. Then you can play really without an air force if you have the anti-air veteran trait. So this is my go-to, but of course it is three slots and it is extremely expensive. What's actually kind of cute uh, about it is that when it switches to uh, ground mode, ground attack mode, it can gain the anti-tank support trait. So you can stick this right behind your lines, turn it into an anti-tank gun and watch the allies cry since it has very good hard attack rating. I think that concludes all the units, yes. Then we are almost... The only thing left to do is now to look at the upgrade screen. It's not very difficult. It's just this button here, upgrade. And here you can basically switch to another kind of unit in the same category and you will automatically be charged or returned prestige or, or slots and you can even do over strength in the same operation. There are some exceptions to this, for example, tanks can also be turned into recon or anti-tank. Unfortunately, you lose, I think it's half your ex experience when switching so you have to be sure about what you're doing and the fun part is you can because artillery can be turned into anti-air and anti-tank you could turn this one into an anti-tank unit and then you could then turn it into a tank but by now it would have you would have one quarter of the experience you started with so I don't think there is much point to that, but it can can be done. Uh, the only thing I can see is that it, I think it retains its medals. So if you have some overrun related medals, you could transfer your tank into the anti-tank category once you get the good anti-tank guns. And that guy could then go about overrunning. Um, but I'm not sold. It's it's. It's the functionality, it's there, but uh, I haven't used it ever. So, but now you know about it. And I think that concludes things. Uh, I have looked at the interface, the map, the units, unit stats. We have talked about the unit categories uh, and the strengths and weaknesses of each unit, really. And we have looked at upgrading and overstrength and using the basket. And I think it's time to finish this and then start playing. See you later.